today on Simplified, I just want to talk about the hierarchical structure, the hierarchical structure of the marital relationship. Um, this is Simplified. If you are new here, um, please subscribe to the channel if you have not. Um, what we do here is try to take some facts, some truths, life wisdom, things that are important, but a bit complex, and we try to simplify it in simple terms. So I'm not going to be um, looking at scriptures too much and talking into much details of what the Bible says, even though all the facts we are going to be throwing out here are Bible truth. <clears throat> so let's talk about marriage, um, the hierarchical structure of marriage, which in simple terms means that marriage has hierarchical structure. Marriage is not a democracy. Marriage, the marital structure is not um, an equality in the marriage structure as defined by the creator of marriage, God himself. The man in a marriage is the head of the marriage. Now, um, when I say marriage, I'm not talking about men marrying men or women marrying women. That's not marriage as far as the Bible is concerned. Okay, now we can debate that another day, but in simplified terms, marriage is a relationship between a man, a male man, and a female man. Okay, you're born a man or you're born a woman and you come together and get married. That's what we're talking about. Now, in that structure, in that relationship, the Bible clearly states that the man is the head of the woman. This is the order of the Bible. Now, in society, uh, there's a lot of debate about equality and we translate that into the marriage relationship. In, in secular life, in your work life, in your business, in your um, everything in life, um, there's some kind of hierarchy, but it's not gender-based. It shouldn't be gender-based. For example, if you run a business or an organization and you want somebody to be the manager or the managing director and you're trying to pick someone because of their gender, I think you're very wrong. Or if you're from a country, because in some countries there's a lot of uh, segregation between the male and the female, uh, and some, some rights are exclusive to the male, that's rubbish. In society, every right of the man should be the right of the woman. That's how God created us. Male and female created he them. So if we are going to segregate, it has to be out of competence or some other qualities. It can't be because of gender. You can't say you're going to be the next boss of the department just because you're male or because you're female. That's segregation. If I run a business, I'd like to have the best hands for the job. I'd like to have the, the, the most qualified, the person who's going to produce um, the better result to run the department. That's how it should be. It should be competency-based and not gender-based. But in the marital relationship, God, who instituted marriage, clearly states that the hierarchical structure in marriage is gender-based. In other words, he says clearly that the man is the head of the woman. So in the organogram of marriage, the children would report to the parents. But among the parents, the, the father is the head. He's on top of this pyramid. Everything reports to him. And then he reports to God. So to, to put a complete statement, the man is the head of the woman, just as Christ is the head of the man. This is the complete structure. This is how it should be. The problem is, and well, there are a couple of problems. One of them is the fact that when a man is not behaving like the head, he's not looking like a head. A head is someone we have to submit to, we have to, to refer to. You know? But if he cannot provide leadership, if he cannot provide direction, if he cannot provide competence, if he's not able to meet up to his responsibility, it becomes difficult to refer to him, to, 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 to submit to him as the head. However, it's not an excuse not to submit to him because it is not debatable. It's not um, some kind of consensus that we can vote him out because he's not competent. No, we don't vote out the man. The man is the head. This is the order. Um, so one of the reasons people struggle to submit or to, to, to maintain this kind of hierarchy is because um, men over time have relegated that, that, that duty of being the head, functioning like the head. But the second reason, and this is what I want to talk about briefly, is society of today, it, it, uh, because of all the segregation, and I started this video by talking about why there should not be a segregation gender-based in society. 
The rights of the male should be the same right of the female in every area of society. Uh, but over the years, over the generations, over the centuries, it's not always been like this. In many, many parts of society, especially over history, the man has always been regarded as superior to the woman. And because of this, we have come through the last century or two where there's been this um, revolt from the female, from this feminine movement of how we need to get equal rights and equality, uh, whether you are male or female. And this is right. This is a, 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 a true cause that every uh, um, normal human being should support. There shouldn't be any kind of segregation between the male and the female uh, in society. But because we are pushing this agenda of how we can make equality in society, we now translate it into the marriage relationship. And I said in the beginning of this video that in the marriage relationship, there is a gender-based hierarchical structure. The man is the head. The male is the head. But because in society we are trying to bring back equality, now we now translate this into the marriage relationship. And then we begin to think that in the marriage relationship also, the male, the female, the husband, the wife should be equal in everything. This will be contrary to the structure as instituted by God who instituted marriage. So in society we are still fighting to get equity and equality. But let's not confuse that to mean that in the marriage, we are equal. We are not equal. Now, to the point I want to make, or to one of the points I want to make today. If you're a woman, and you're watching this, and you're not married, okay, uh, but you're not willing to accept the hierarchical structure that when you get married, by getting married, you are agreeing to submit to the headship, the authority, the leadership of your husband. If you're not willing to do that, if you are with the mentality that even though I'm married, I'm the wife, we are equal, we're going to have equal everything, uh, then my advice for you is don't get married. Because that's not the order. To, to get married, you need to be ready to submit, to say, I'm going to be delegating the authority, the headship of my life to a man, to this man I'm getting married to. That's why when we say when you choose, you have to choose correctly. You have to make sure you're choosing someone who can be your head, and you are okay with that. Otherwise, there will be strife and conflict. There cannot be two captains in a boat. There cannot be two husbands in a marriage. There cannot be two heads in a marital relationship. There's one head, and that is the man. Um, having said that, it's important if you are also a woman who is married already, uh, that you realize this and submit to the authority of your husband. Of course, we, we, we also need to balance it by saying that if you're a man who is married or a man who is going to be married, you cannot abuse the position of headship. It is not the same thing as rulership. So when the Bible says we should go and have dominion and we should and, 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 and have dominion over the beds of the earth, it didn't say have dominion over your fellow human being. The husband is not dominating the wife. This is not headship. That's slavery. The wife is not your slave. She's not your subject. She's your help. Okay? You are the head. She's helping. You are in the hierarchy, the head. But you are not her ruler. You are not her creator. And you don't dominate over her. She's not your servant. You're not her master. You're not her, her, her creator. Okay? She's not your slave. It's not a master-slave relationship. It is... A leader and a follower relationship. You provide headship, you provide leadership, both spiritual and physical. You provide direction for the family, where we are going to. Now, before I run out of this, I'm trying to make this as quick as possible. I want to talk about two words. One of them is submission. Submission. Submission is what the Bible asks for, for the female, that you submit to the male, right? Um, usually, in a good marital relationship, for most of the times, we don't need submission. If we agree, then there's no need for submission. If I want to go right, I, I think we should go right as a family, and my wife thinks we should go right as a family, and we're both going right. There is no submission. There's agreement. Submission is when we do not agree. And how do we come to submission? First, 
we start with communication. So if I believe we should go right and my wife believes we should go left, we should have a conversation. We should talk about it. We should say, I think we should go right. And this is my reason why I think we should go right. And she will say, I think we should go left. And these are my reasons. And we should deliberate. And as a man, as the head, you must be humble enough to want to listen. Is it possible there's some wisdom in what your wife is saying? You don't just say, I'm the head. So whatever I say is law. There's a reason God gave you a help. It's because you don't know everything. You could be wrong as a man. You must be humble enough and smart enough to know that sometimes the, the wisdom will be with my wife. So the fact that you are the head, the fact that you are the one to make the call, doesn't mean it has to be your call all the time. You don't have to call your position all the time. Sometimes her position is the wise call to make. It's still your call to make. But you need to choose whether you're going with your position, her position, or somewhere in between. So if I want to go right, I come back to that. And my wife thinks we should go left. We should have a communication. We should have some conversation and say, why should we go right? Why should we go left? What are the benefits of both sides? And, we should, and I should be humble and open-minded enough to listen to her and see the wisdom from her perspective. Okay? Two heads are better than one. And if after all that deliberation, we still don't have an agreement after communication... Then we come to submission. And what is submission then? Submission now is the woman who is to submit now says, okay, we can't agree, but whatever you decide as the head, I'm going to have to go with it because you are my head. And I'm not going to go with it grudgingly and say, okay, we go because you say so, but I'm not. No, I, submission is, I'm saying, I would have rather gone left. I'd have rather we gone left. We go left. But since it's your call to make, whatever you call, I will support it 100% and we go wherever you say we go. That's submission from the woman. What does the man do with that? The man makes decision. It's your call to make. So you go back and review all the positions. This is why my wife wants us to go left. These are her points. This is why I think we should go right. This is, and then you come out with a decision. And your decision could be one of three things. It could be we go left, just like you said, but it's your call to make that. Or two, we go somewhere in between you know, not, not extreme left, not extreme right. We find some compromise. I think this is the wise thing for us to do. Or you can say, thirdly, we go right. It's still my position, but I still believe it's the best, and this is how we go. It is expected, demanded of the wife at this point to follow the leadership, the direction of the husband. This is submission. It is very, very important that we are clear on submission. But the second thing I want to talk about is responsibility. And this is for the man. The woman is to be submissive. The man is to be responsible. What is responsibility? The, the, the hierarchy says the man is the head of the woman just as Christ is the head of the man. A responsible man will follow the leadership of Christ as he provides leadership for his wife and for his family. So it is your responsibility as a man now to say, okay, I make sure I'm making the right call. I'm going to pray over it. I'm going to research over it. I'm going to listen to advice from my wife. I'm going to consult so that when I come to make the, this call, it will be the right call. It is, you have to be responsible enough to do that. You can't just wake up and say, we're going left. We're going right. Her destiny, her future depends on your decisions. Your children's destiny, their future depends on your decision. So you must be responsible. She will submit why the man will be responsible. So I summarize. If you're a woman, you're getting married or you're married. If you cannot submit to him, don't marry him. If two of you disagree and you cannot say, even though I don't agree with you, you are my head and I'm going to go the way you say we go. Don't marry him. That's wrong. That's against the scriptural structure, the order laid down in the Bible. If you're a man... If you're going to demand a woman to submit to you by the laws of the scripture, you have to be responsible enough to protect her interests, her future, her destiny, your whole family's direction. That's your call. That's why you have God as the head of the man. So you refer to him. You, you, you confer with him. You seek his wisdom, his guidance, his direction to lead your family. In simple terms, the man is the head. But you have to provide leadership by submitting to God, who is the head of the man. I hope this simple analogy and, and explanation on the hierarchy of marriage has helped you a bit. I hope you learned something. If you do and you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. 
um, and if you think it will help someone please share it and um, it will go a long way to help them but it will also help the channel because then the YouTube algorithm will, will, will filter this video to the top and many people can see it and be blessed. If you are not subscribed to the channel or you are new here, please click on the subscribe button and also while you are there, ding the notification bell so you get to know when we have new videos in the channel. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.